title of my presentation is uh, Teaching Trauma Psychology Cultural Challenges. <coughs> Let me just say that I, um, I've been teaching cultural psychology and cultural awareness classes for 12 years. I've been teaching trauma psychology for five years, and I feel very frustrated when I, I don't see these two worlds coming together. Uh, and this is basically the topic today. It's based, uh, I consider myself a, a cultural psychologist, and this is based on my observations of the field. Okay, this is uh, a quote. I, I taught a class um, on PTSD a few years ago, and uh, in the class evaluation, this was the question. Was multicultural material relevant to the course included in an integrated manner? This is what the student answered. Yes, however, I thought that we almost spent too much time talking about racial cultural issues, so we did not get through all the relevant material and he or she um, uh, capitalized the word relevant. Thank you. So um, cultural psychologists and psychiatrists and anthropologists uh, will tell you that culture is extremely important if you ask the question, is culture relevant in trauma psychology classes? Uh, Draws Dick's uh, quote, if you want to write again, uh, attests to that, culture influences Culture influences symptoms, scores, and outcome of PTSD. It determines uh, clinical presentation of problems and helps seeking behavior. Culture shapes the ways individuals, family, and larger systems cope with and adapt to consequences of trauma. It determines understanding and conceptualizing of suffering. Now, if you were to ask trauma psychologists the same question, I doubt that there's one person who would say no culture is not important. Uh, they would probably tell you that culture is important and that they pay attention to it. And what I see as the reality is that if you use a cultural lens to analyze how cultural, culturally sensitive trauma psychology is, you would find that culture is still not part of the majority of trauma treatment paradigms. Yeah, go ahead. Keep Just say next. Or next. Um, a psych info search I did from, um, informal search I did from uh, 1988 to 2009 using the subject words of trauma, PTSD, and culture only yielded, uh, um, next. Oh, and we have a quote from our very president elect, uh, Laura Brown, who says, I have yet to find a major model of trauma treatment that begins with the question, what does this trauma mean to this person given their history, their cultures, and their identities. So I, I can relate to that quote. Psych info search I did uh, yielded only 161 articles uh, from 1988 to 2009. Many of these articles were from edited books by cultural anthropologists, <coughs> psychiatrists, and foreign journals. Trauma, PTSD, and race only yielded 60 articles. Next. Now this is troublesome if you consider that people of color, LGBT populations, and other disadvantaged populations are more likely to be exposed to traumatic events on an ongoing basis. Now, uh, quickly some facts. Uh, membership diversity, as uh, first membership chair of the trauma division, I can tell you that it's very, it looks very monolithic when I run the numbers and the demographics. It's very monolithic. Uh, same with ISDSS, I contacted the membership chair and uh, I, I got one answer in, in the email. They did not have the data, but the answer was, we're not that diverse, quote unquote. Patients in clinical trials to support evidence-based practice are not representative of patients in the community, and that's particularly true for ethnic minority and immigrant groups. Ethnic minority populations have been neglected uh, by evidence-based practice, and this is uh, being said by two major uh, cultural psychologists, Sue and Zane. Practice guidelines such as the ones uh, for ISDSS for those working with trauma are not based on research conducted on diverse populations. 
uh, there are some changes now because that has been brought up to the attention of many. Next, please. Now, what about trauma psychology courses? Very few graduate and undergraduate programs in the U.S. teach trauma psychology as a required course. I'm trying to make it a required course in my school. Trauma psychology, uh, also, if you think about programs that address um, trauma internationally, I could only count three programs in the U.S. that train on international disaster, that does international disaster training. Uh, the field of traumatology tends to view trauma as a universal phenomenon. Uh, very few cultural, and there are very few cultural considerations. And uh, it is heavily influenced by the biomedical model. Next, please. So, uh, in my experience, uh, whenever the need to account for cultural difference is raised, the voice sentiment is one of derision or irritation accompanied by the notion that culture is something belonging to the other, quote-unquote, or it is an irrelevant and exotic nuisance. This behavior is understandable if you think of the anxiety produced by the enormity and the difficulty of the task of accounting for the diverse, complex, and unclear factors that comprise cultural mediation. The result is a politically correct insertion of the word culture into scientific writing in psychology, without any meaningful accounting for culture in scientific work. The newly developed field of trauma psychology has not been exempt from this phenomenon, as I indicated previously. Few researchers and theorists have acknowledged the need to account for the cultural mediation of what is traumatic for that particular person and how traumas are coped with. Next, please. While clinical trauma psychology has acknowledged relevance of the ethical principle of respect for differences in trauma treatment, this has not so far motivated a systematic effort to improve our understanding of how culture is intertwined with our cognitive and emotional responses to trauma. For example, the ISTSS treatment guidelines acknowledge that psychological interventions for traumatic reactions should be culturally sensitive and respectful of politics, race, and culture. This I, I took from their guidelines. However, there are no guidelines on how to do this, and the recommendations remain at the aspirational level. And I, uh, I identify very much with Kermeyer's work um, here in Canada, and uh, he says that a comprehensive understanding of trauma must explore how collective cultural meanings articulate with the individual psychological and biological responses identified through neuroscience, in clinical research. He's trying to integrate that cultural aspect into all of this here, well, in his work. Next, please. Now that we're considering integrating trauma psychology courses in mainstream undergraduate and graduate psychology training, and that we are trying to define trauma competencies for psychologists and making traumatology a substan substantive area in professional psychological practice, we need to make sure that cultural training and cultural awareness are part of the package. Trauma courses are the perfect venue to do this. If we take into, into, again, into consideration that those who are most likely to be impacted by trauma are ethnic minorities and underprivileged groups, we cannot undertake the study of trauma without taking into consideration the sociocultural context surrounding these communities. Among these communities, it is the unobservable that matters. The silent narratives that are deeply rooted in history are the ones that determine how they behave, how they respond to, respond to traumatic events, and how they recover. So are the, dy the, the dynamics of power and oppression. The power differential between the therapist and the client, for example, are the elephant in the room when we label a client a victim of trauma. These are the kind of narratives that might be typically, typically present in cultural awareness class, but these are not generally present in trauma psychology courses and training in general. Ironically, trauma psychology courses are the ideal setting for students to bring up histories of violence and oppression in society. Next, please. So following, I offer suggestions on how to include trauma, uh, so culture in trauma psychology. And many of these I, are based on the American Psychological Association Task Force on the Implementation of the Multicultural Guidelines. Uh, the, this is based on their recommendations. So the first one is training in cultural competence in trauma should be a necessary component of trauma education. 
established benchmark to assess cultural competence in trauma psychology at different developmental levels of education, such as undergraduate and graduate psychology programs, as well as training and internship programs. This obviously is a difficult undertaking since traumatology is still trying to make inroads in mainstream psychology education. The next one is include representation of different underprivileged groups and those with multicultural expertise in accreditation commissions, state and national psychological associations, and institutions that specialize in the study of trauma, such as ISSD, ISTSS, the Veterans Administration, and the Division of Trauma Psychology. This diverse presence should also be reflected both in presenters and programs at national and international conventions related to trauma psychology. Consider adopting the training model of the ethnographic training in graduate school programs and ensure that a certain percentage of readings are from non-American psychology publications and authors. Also, graduate psychology programs should require at least two college level courses on cultural psychology and anthropology, as well as foreign training experience, preferably in a non-Western country. Next, please. The next one is include a diverse representation of psychologists on editorial boards of journals specializing in trauma to ensure a fair depiction and representation of historically marginalized groups. We also create standards for cultural content in texts addressing theories and systems of trauma psychology, including a critical analysis of transcultural applicability, relevant writings from cultural anthropology, sociology, and cultural theory. Now, unlike many of their supervisors and professors, the new generation of psychologists or, or, or psychologist trainees has, for the most part, taken cultural awareness and diversity classes where self-exploration, privilege, and oppression are typical. Many of these students, especially those representing marginalized groups, are more ready to question and critique the core assumptions of the field. Thus, the field needs to make room for this new generation to take the lead in finding new directions for theory and research rather than perpetuating traditional ways of thinking in research programs because of fear of debunking psychology's position as a science. Trauma psychology's quest to include evidence-based treatment and rigorous scientific research has omitted other ways of researching psychological trauma, such as Liston's psychohistory methods, the cultural formulations questionnaire developed by Kermeyer, uh, the addressing model by Pamela Hayes, those got to be in integral parts of any trauma assessment. Ultimately, the trauma psychology field has to become and remain mindful of how homogeneous and insular psychology disciplines have tended to be. Promoting international and interdisciplinary collaborations are what can prevent our field from going down this unproductive road. International training in psychology should be an option offered to American faculty in order to promote an internalization of the U.S. psychology curriculum. Likewise, it, it's imperative to promote international training in disaster mental health. This is a recommendation, by the way, from the ISTSS Task Force on International Trauma Training. Finally, ensure that trauma courses offer an examination of sociocultural and political factors involved in the trauma recovery environment and the intergenerational transmission of trauma. They should also include an exploration and discussion of the role of religion and morality as cultural diversity factors, which mediate both traumatizing and coping mechanisms. Finally, promote an understanding of the healing mechanisms intrinsic in culture, rather than emphasizing the pathological aspects that clash with dominant culture expectations of normality. In summary, it behooves us to um, those of us involved in, in doing trauma work, research, and education to promote a field that has relevance to the majority of the world's population, especially those most affected by trauma. Integrating our scientific knowledge, including neuroscience, with the knowledge accumulated by cultural psychology, anthropology, and other fields is the most sensible plan of action. The study of trauma, I believe, will likely change the course of psychology as it stands today. Let's avoid the mistakes of the past and make traumatology a truly culturally sensitive field. Thank you very much.